Tomatoes are the most popular vegetable, well, actually fruit planted in the vegetable garden. I guess everybody loves tomato sandwiches the same way I do. Today, I'm gonna to share with you 12 of my favorite varieties. All right, number one is Indigo Blueberries Tomatoes. This is a new one for us. Now, every year, I always make myself plant at least one new variety because I always want to try something new, and it's just something I do. And this year, for my new variety, it is the Indigo Blueberries Tomatoes. Now, folks, that name just says it all, doesn't it? So these blueberries is an open pollinator for you guys that want to save your seeds out there. This one is one you can use. It's a cherry type, and it is an indeterminate. Now, these things here load up with these deep, deep purple cherry tomatoes that almost look black, kind of a dark, dark red. The fruits average anywhere from one to two ounces. Now, anything that you eat that's got this dark color to it, we know is full of antioxidants, but this thing's absolutely beautiful. One of the prettiest cherry tomatoes I have seen in a long, long time. You wanna let these things get really ripe and really dark and kind of soft before you harvest them. They're resistant to cracking, and they do have some disease tolerance. This is not something that I want to plant a lot of, but I do want to plant a few. It's just going to, I just, I just know it's going to turn out to be a great, great snacking cherry tomato. And I ain't going to plant that many. I'm going to plant probably about, I don't know about 20 of these right here, that'll be enough. I won't plant that many. I'll probably end up planting about three or four. And then I'll give some to my neighbors or to my friends. Y'all hear that in the background there? My neighbors got one of them little yapping dogs. Y'all know what a yapping dog is? One of them little bitty dogs that yaps all the time. And he has it right up here beside my greenhouse where he can go in the yard, the fenced in area, or he can go back in the house there and he loves to stay outside when I'm out here in the greenhouse and yap. And I just want to tell you, I really enjoy that dog. Makes my life a lot nice when I come out here to my greenhouse and he's a yapping at me. All right, number two we're going to go with is going to be the hallucinator. Now you folks that just want to grow you a tomato, a good sandwich slicing tomato, and you want to be successful at it, this is it right here. This Hulsinator, we, we brought it out last year. It is a disease resistant, determinate type tomato that you're going to be successful with. Has very high disease resistance, has a lot of vigor, has a lot of foliage on the, uh, on the plant, so it helps prevent it from uh, sun scald. I'm going to plant 10 of these, I think. See there? The seeds are pelleted and primed. That means that they're going to come up pretty quick. These pelleted and primed seeds are going to pop up a little quicker than the other seeds are. But back to the hallucinator. If you want a tomato to be successful growing you a good slice of tomato, this is it. Hands down, this is the one I recommend right here. And what's good about it, not only does it have good vigor, good foliage on the plant, but it tastes good, which is unusual to find a tomato that has really good disease resistant and it grows real easy, but it has good flavor. But we have it there in the Hulsinator. And number three is Sun Sugar Tomato, right there. Now that's a little small yellow tomato there that everybody just raves and raves about the taste of. This is a hybrid, it's an indeterminate cherry tomato and these things are delicious. And they, everybody says they taste just like candy and I have to agree. Now this is one that I grow every, every year. Yellow to that orange color there. And look here, on some of our varieties, not all of them, our most popular varieties, we put that little marker in with the seed pack. And that uh, kind of helps you there. I am not going to plant a bunch of these. I plant, I'll end up planting about two of them in my garden. I'm going to plant 10 of them here in the seed tray. And yeah, I'm going to give away a few of them. But two of these things right here, if you take care of them, and you uh, trailer some or cage them up, these things will make and make and make. And the two, two plants is a plenty for the, uh, for the two of us. It's one of them tomatoes that you just walk around out in the garden and you snack on, great in a salad, sun sugar, 
if I if I recommend one cherry type tomato, it's sun sugar. All right, Pink Delicious right here, and I got to tell you about Pink Delicious. Last year was the first year I grew it in the trial garden. This is the first year we've had the seed to offer. But this right here is an heirloom type tomato, and it looks just like a heirloom tomato, but yet it has disease resistance to it, so you can grow it, because you know a lot of times we struggle with growing those heirloom types, but this has got the flavor, it's got the look, but it is an heirloom type hybrid. We've just got some disease resistance. It helps us to be successful growing them. If you're growing for market, uh, or you like that heirloom you know, type or taste, hey, you gotta give this one a try. It's a pinkish tomato. It did really, really well for us. Now, it's not a really heavy producer as none of the heirlooms are, but it does give you a good harvest of those big old great tomatoes. All right, so we're on five, five, six, and seven. Our next three is going to be a dwarf tomato that is great for growing in containers. You could put them in hanging baskets as well, raised beds too, but I wouldn't plant them in the ground. These things don't get very big at all. They just load up with cherry tomatoes. Now this next one is Rosy Finch, and Rosy Finch is one of the three in the series called the Little Birdie series. Rosy Finch has that deep rose color, just like the name implies right there. Now, these things are some I'm not gonna plant a lot of because it don't take a lot of these, but I do plant a few extra of these, and what I do is I take a root pouch, or you could take a hanging basket, and you plant three, one of each in that root pouch or that hanging basket, and then they mature out and you have tomatoes with three different colors in that one container. Works wonderful for gifts. I love to give these things away. Also nice to keep down to the house, close to the kitchen, so you can just walk outside and grab you a few of them. These things are disease resistant. They're very productive, but they're so compact and so small. They just work wonderful for a container garden in there. Rosie Finch, we got that one. The next one in that series is called Red Robin. And as the name implies, this is the, the redder of the ones. Now all three of them, the growth habit on these plants are the same, small and compact. The, um, the days to maturity on these tomatoes, these dwarf ones, is 55 days. Now that's 55 days from the time they go into the container or transplant time. That's not time from seeding, but that's still pretty doggone quick. So I'll start some of these when I start my other tomatoes, tomatoes but I also will come back in a few weeks and start me some more of these so I can have them pretty much all throughout the summertime. The last of the three little birdie series is yellow canary. Uh, Rosie Finch and Yellow Canary, if I just was going to grow two of them, would probably be my two favorite ones. This yellow one here is outstanding and adds a lot of pop to it when you grow it out beside those Rosie Finch or the Red Robin for that matter. We're going to plant us about 10 of these right here. All right, next one is Lemon Boy. Lemon Boy is the one that won our taste test a couple years ago. It is a yellow version or a lemon version of the better boy tomato. Indeterminate type, uh, it's got good vigor to it. It's a great plant to grow because it's got disease resistant, yet it's got wonderful flavor. Now I had this conversation a couple of days ago with a fellow about these, these lemons here. We did a blind taste test because you know those yellow tomatoes, we just can't, our mind won't let us think that's a good eating tomato. But when we blind tested it, this one here, did wonderful. So I'm gonna plant me a few of these and I'm gonna trellis them up. I'm gonna plant probably about five or six of these right here. That's gonna be enough for those because I, I don't, it's one of those things I plant a few of, but it's not my standard tomato that I depend on. All right, next one is Purple Boy tomato. Now Purple Boy, it's kind of real similar to the Cherokee purple tomato. This no heirloom, but this one right here has improved disease resistance to it. And uh, it does better in challenging growing conditions right here. These things make these deep purple fruits just like the Cherokee purple does, but yet they're a little more symmetrical than the heirloom types are, a little more round. They have that same color, but it's more like a regular tomato than the heirlooms. Taste is off the chain, indeterminate type. I like to grow just a few of these. I'm gonna plant me about 10 of them. 
and I'll give a couple of those away. Now I'm going to tell you, these make a decent sized tomato, but if you keep them pruned and keep them suckered back, they'll make a bigger tomato. If you want those bigger type tomatoes on any of the indeterminates, the yellow boy and the uh, purple boy, I like to keep mine pruned back, you know, for a little while until they get away from me. But it's a great one that I've grown for a couple years now. I like it a lot. All right, next one, Shelby tomato. Shelby tomato, we just added it last year. This is one I tried extensively last year. Come highly recommended to me. It's an Italian type paste tomato. Now, this is a determinate tomato, and the bush didn't get real big on me, which is okay, but it is a cicada variety, so it had a lot of foliage to it, and it really protected the fruit well from sun scald. But these things absolutely loaded up. Great disease resistant. They are a hybrid. The taste was off the chain, and man, does it make some good salsa. So if you're looking for a salsa tomato, this is one here that I would highly recommend. Very productive. Shelby. All right, for you guys out there that love to grow the indeterminate types and you want a good indeterminate slice of tomato, this is the one I'd recommend for you. Big beef right here. I grew this for the last two years. Big beef is the standard, or one of the standards in my book there, if you want to grow a big slice of tomato and you want it indeterminate. Now this is an all-American selection winner right here. Plant has very good vigor. And you know what? The tomatoes just taste awesome as well. Now normally speaking, most people will tell you an indeterminate tomato will out taste or taste better than a determinate type. That's kind of somewhat subjective to everybody's taste buds, but that's what most people most people understand that. Um, I can't tell a lot of difference in it, but I do know these big beefs are good and they grow out really well. They do well here in South Georgia. We have a lot of disease problems. So indeterminate tomato, big slicer, big beef's the one for you. All right, my last one here is mountain vineyard tomato. Let me turn around so you can see it right there. This is a grape tomato. Only grape tomato we got in our lineup, I think there. This is one we've had for about three years. Man, we first tasted these things right here. We knew we had to carry them. This variety here is a hybrid variety. It's compact, yet it's an indeterminate plant. But they are absolutely delicious. Now these are one of the varieties that you get the nice little hoss label in. I'm gonna tell you a little secret about these. These are pelleted and I'm pretty sure they're primed also. I know they're pelleted. This particular variety here has what they call the crimson gene. Now, if you've been around tomato breeding very long and you heard them talk, they talk a lot about the crimson gene. And that crimson gene is known for its deep red color and its flavor. A lot of your breeders, they love to use that gene in their breeding process here. And if you can look at how dark that tomato is right there, it's just that dark and it just tastes absolutely wonderful. Hybrid variety, mountain vineyard variety. I would recommend planting a few of these. It don't take a lot of them. I'm gonna plant about 10 here. And yeah, I'll give a few of them away to my neighbors. I'll keep probably, I don't know, maybe three or four in my garden. Now it's really tough for me to tell you some of my favorite varieties cause I love all tomatoes. Now some of them I'm more successful with than I'm others. But just like I love horses, I've never seen an ugly horse. I've never seen an ugly tomato. I love them all. I just gave you a sample today of some of the ones that we're really successful with and maybe some of them that you should try that maybe have some things to it that you're not used to, just like this blueberry tomatoes. It may not work out for me, but man, such a beautiful tomato and such a wonderful name. You just got to try something new every now and then.